Wilbur and Orville Wright did everything together. They started a local newspaper together, opened up a bike shop together, and they invented the first airplane together. They were so in sync that Wilbur said they thought together, but they also fought together. They argued a lot. The bickering would often start at breakfast, carry on through lunch, and continue past dinner. Once, a quarrel became so intense that their sister Catherine cried out, If you don't stop arguing, I'll leave home. Standing up for themselves was encouraged in their childhood. Their father, Milton Wright, was a bishop, but he included books by atheists and agnostics in his library and encouraged his children to read and debate them. Debating helped them develop the courage to fight for their ideas. If they hadn't, the airplane might never have been invented. In the early days of aviation, the very idea of human flight was considered impossible. The Washington Post declared at the turn of the 20th century, it is a fact that man can't fly. Many attempted controlled flight, but none had succeeded. In 1896, German aviator Otto Lilienthal lost his life when he lost control of his glider due to a sudden gust of wind. His technique of adjusting the machine's center of gravity by shifting his body proved impractical and dangerous. Despite no college education or technical training, the Wright brothers dared to dream of flight, with Orville saying, We could not understand that there was anything about a bird that would enable it to fly that could not be built on a larger scale and used by man. One of their most intense arguments had to do with the design of the propeller. In the early 20th century, there were no existing models. Most of what they knew came from their knowledge of boats. But a propeller designed for the water didn't work efficiently in the air. They needed a narrower blade with a higher speed. With no existing designs to work from, they had to invent the propeller themselves. They argued over the propeller's speed, the precise angle at which the blades strike the air, the velocity of their flying machine, and how airflow around the propeller blades affects aerodynamics. All of these elements were deeply interconnected and challenged them to engineer the ideal propeller. Wilbur, the older brother, was highly disagreeable and didn't care much about what other people thought of him. Orville, on the other hand, was gentle and sensitive to criticism, but wasn't afraid to punch back when it came to his older brother. Wilbur even exclaimed, he's such a good scrapper. Author John McMahon, who wrote a book about the Wright brothers, described their intense debates this way. Their low staccato voices sounded like muffled machine guns in the low-ceilinged living room of their home and in the little bedroom upstairs, where they continued to hurl angles, sines, cosines, and tangents at each other through the thin partitions. Sometimes these debates escalated into shouting matches. Their bike mechanic, Charlie Taylor, who helped build the engines for their planes, observed, they'd shout at each other something terrible. I don't think they really got mad, but they sure got awfully hot. Yet, they never attacked each other personally, but rather focused on challenging each other's viewpoints. They'd even find themselves persuading each other and then both changing their minds. Orville recalled, We would discover that we were as far from agreement as when we started, but that both had changed to the other's original position in the discussion. After months of debate, the Wright brothers finally understood that a propeller works like a rotating wing. When the propellers spin and push air backward, it creates a force called thrust, which pushes the airplane forward. This is based on Newton's third law of motion, which says that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. They eventually figured out that the plane needed not one propeller, but two, spinning in opposite directions. The spinning of one would balance out the other, making the plane easier to control. They made the propellers out of wood, cutting them to the right size and shape using a hatchet and draw shave. They then decided to put them to the test at Kitty Hawk, a small fishing village in North Carolina known for its strong winds. When they had to decide who would attempt the first flight on December 14, 1903, they avoided another argument in this case by tossing a coin. Wilbur won, but he lost the chance to be the first to fly successfully when he oversteered, causing the aircraft to climb too steeply, stall, and dive into the sand. After repairing their flyer, they made a second attempt three days later. With Orville in the pilot's seat, the flyer stayed in the air for 12 seconds, traveling 120 feet or 37 meters. When Orville was later asked if he was scared, he responded, scared? There wasn't time. They flew four times that day. The fourth and final attempt, this time with Wilbur at the controls, was the best flight, lasting 59 seconds and covering 852 feet or 260 meters. They had taught the world that humans could fly. 
but they didn't really celebrate. For them, it was business as usual. Their mechanic, Charlie Taylor, captured their understated reaction perfectly. I know I thought it was pretty nice that they had done what they set out to do, and I was glad to hear that the motor ran all right. But I don't remember doing any jig steps. The boys were always so matter of fact about things. Even when they got home, there was no special celebration in the shop. Of course, they were pleased with the flights, but their first word with me, as I remember, was about the motor being damaged. They were always thinking of the next thing to do. Just as their arguments were never about personally attacking each other, but about making their planes better, they didn't go for a big celebration, but instead focused on improving their aircraft. Now they had to prove they could fully control their plane by turning and flying longer distances, as their flights up to then were short and in a straight line. Luckily, the owner of a cow pasture a few miles outside of their hometown of Dayton, Ohio, kindly let them fly there, so they didn't have to make the long trek to Kitty Hawk. In 1904 and 1905, the Wright brothers made about 150 flights. One lasted 39 minutes, covering 24 and a half miles or 39 kilometers, during which Wilbur circled the field 29 times. When it was time to show the world their invention, the French aviator Léon de Lagrange summed up the superiority of the right flying machine this way. Nous sommes battus, meaning we are beaten. Their rigorous debates propelled the Wright brothers to conquer the skies. As Wilbur once said, discussion brings out new ways of looking at things. If the Wright brothers hadn't argued so much, they would have never pushed each other to try new things, and somebody else may have ended up in the history book. Their dedication and knowledge of math and physics led to the world's first functional airplane. If you've been inspired to build a strong foundation in STEM, Brilliant is a great resource to learn math, science, computer science, and data science interactively. Whether you're starting with the basics in math or tackling more advanced problems, Brilliant guides you every step of the way. Many of their interactive courses are designed to tackle real-world challenges. Take Brilliant's new Thinking in Code course, which gets you designing simple programs to solve real-world problems like creating a navigation app. You can try out Brilliant for free for 30 days by signing up with a custom link in my description, brilliant.org newsthink. And if you're one of the first 200 people to sign up with my link, you'll receive 20% off Brilliant's premium subscription, which gives you access to all of their thousands of offerings. Thanks for watching. For NewsThink, I'm Cindy Palm.